Welcome to Love Them Knives channel. We're going to talk kitchen knives today and I got these kitchen knives from Rabbit Fantasy. Actually, I got them from Emily. I met Emily Tsu, H-S-U. Uh, I met her a couple of years ago at the SHOT Show in Vegas. She was there with Reich Knives and CH Knives. Those two guys know each other. And then, um, so she was there because, of course, the owner of CH was not there. And the owner of Reich wasn't there. I think it was Ian who owns Keto USA, which they sell Reich knives. And they sell Keto USA knives as well. And then Emily was there also coordinating, doing some of the stuff, helping CH knives. So they were there on one table. So I, I met both Ian and Emily. Emily has this website. She's selling primarily kitchen knives. But these knives are interesting because I think they're really good quality knives. They're not terribly expensive knives. They're like in the $60 range. And they are uh, primarily uh, made of Aus 10, which is a good corrosion resistant steel. You can read up about that, but it, I mean, it's, it's being used more and more. It kind of was Aus 8 in the past, but Aus 10 has really stepped up there. A little bit different formula, one that I like a little bit better than Aus 8. Also, in, uh, in their uh, bailiwick is the X50CR MOV15. So this is like a German steel. And I looked that up as well. And you guys can do some research on these steels if you want. Um, X50 CRMOV, German steel, very stain resistant. Here's the composition on it. Uh, then he feels the XCR MOV 15 uh, knives because they're not expensive, but they're really nice, uh, durable quality knives. Uh, you know, you got toughness and corrosion resistance. And, and you know what? That's what you really need is you need something that, that will flex, you know, without breaking. So it'll take impact, which is toughness. And then corrosion resistance because you have enough chromium in there to be resistant to corrosion. Uh, Anything with carbon in it, by the way, will corrode. But, you know, you get into the stainless area and that's where these are. So uh, they're very sharp. Uh, and take a look at them. This is that, uh, I don't know, I call it Knoll, K-O-N-O-L-L. Because -L -L. I don't think you pronounce the K, but maybe you do. Uh, and it has a mosaic pin in it. It's full tang, it's contoured. I have not field tested these yet. So I wanted to do this as a basic entry to show you the knives. And then I'm gonna put these knives to use in the kitchen. And I don't know if I'm gonna wait six, nine months, a year, whatever, and do a follow up. I want them to get dull. Uh, and have to resharpen them, see how they resharpen. Uh, of course, kitchen knives, by and large, I mean, you need to wipe them down when you're done. You need to care for them because anything with carbon in it will corrode. So you can't just cut up a bunch of acetic stuff and then let all that residue sit on the knife and not touch it for days. Okay, so, you, you know, care for your knives. Um, but they seem to be really nice quality. Fit and finish seems really good. Uh, you know, they're contoured nicely. And let's go to the next one. This is a one I can't pronounce either. I think G-O-J-D-E-N. Okay. And if you look at this as well, it's Aus 10 plus or minus 60 to... 60 HRC plus or minus two. Okay. Uh, this one is GT7 powdered steel. 63 plus or minus two. Um, I think this is basically an Aus 10 Damascus as well. Because if you look up GT7 
powdered steel. There's nothing that you come up with that doesn't take you right to this knife. And so I think this is a name that they've invented because I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it as well as the SAP 15. If you look in their information where they say it's GT7, right? A couple pages in, of course, like I just showed you, it says it's OS 10. So maybe it's laminated with other steels and they've come up with a, with a name. Uh, I don't know. But we're going to find out just how they function in the kitchen. Fairly, you know, thin blade stock like, you know, kitchen knives would be. Take a look. Now this one, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look full tang to me. This one does. Of course, this one and this one all do. With liners there, I mean, they feel, yeah, pretty substantial. I mean, they have some weight to them. Now, I sent uh, one of these in, and I'm going to show you the one I sent in. This one here. Okay. So, look familiar? Yeah, no kidding. Got this from a viewer, and it's GT7. Guess what it tested as? OS 10. It tested as OS 10 with the PMI, the X, uh, XRF analyzer. So, yes. Uh, and that, I never did report on that, and I don't have the PMI uh, actual readout uh unfortunately uh here i don't know where i put it but i got it back and i stuck stuck it somewhere and now i can't find it and i've asked my testing guy if he can pull it out of his records or not but i know from the email back when he gave me the list he said yes it it tests as aus 10. now there are other knives that are not quite so uh <clears throat> lovely and I got this one from some outlet somewhere and says China on it. This and that is full tang. Okay. But it was around $8 or maybe 10 with shipping and everything and had it tested and it's uh, 420J2. So no, no, it's not the same thing. Uh, kind of take a look and compare. I mean, I don't understand this here. Uh, when here you're cut away, I mean, so you can get through product intelligently. That to me does not look like a great design either. But I mean, it's, this is definitely lighter. This is more substantial in the hand. I mean, just the quality robustness of this one is just yeah, heads and tails above this one. So, I mean, there are less expensive knives out there, but yeah, I guess you get what you pay for. Hold on, let me pull a piece of paper here. So, what do we got? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really sharp. So, yeah, out of the box so far, yes. Wow, okay. Yeah, all really, really, really sharp. And I'll give you the, uh, you know, the link to her site. Uh, you can look at all the different types of knives they have. Obviously, kitchen knives vary depending on their purpose. And these will uh, definitely get some use in uh, the kitchen here and we'll know more about them then but I mean the quality feels good from what I've heard from the couple of viewers that have bought these knives from her site is that they're really impressed with them um, from some of the feedback I've seen as well they they seem like they're very pleased with them 
and we can take a look really quick at some of the stats. You know, in this knife, yeah, seven and a half inch uh, handle, which is oh, about 19, a little over 19, 19 and a half centimeters overall. Uh, about 30 centimeters at 13 inches. This one here. Wow. Uh, getting close to 8 inches at uh, 20 centimeters. And overall, you know, close to 13 inches at, uh, well, really close to 23 centimeters. And I think this is basically the same thing as the top one. And this one, uh, yeah, these are all right in there. Seven and three quarter inches at uh, about almost 20 centimeters, not quite. And then uh, 12 and a half inches overall at, at 32 centimeters. Uh, one thing that might be interesting is uh, blade stock. And we're looking at, let me see if I can lay it across the top and the bottom as it's kind of irregular here. Yeah, about 2.8, 2.9 at 0.11. Next. Uh, 0.08, 2.2, next, 2.0, at 0.08, and I believe this is the same as the one below, no, 0.09, at 2.5, so, pretty thin, um, uh, Behind the edge, point two, point oh one. Uh, the weight on these knives varies, so let's move the average box out of the way and get our our scale in here, and let's do a little bit of a way off here. Uh, grams, um, 203, let's roll it around to ounces, 7.17 ounces on the Everrich knife, and there we go, uh, 9.43 ounces at 267 grams, yeah, this one definitely feels substantial in the hands. And if we can just get that tip off off the table, there you go. 256 grams at 9 ounces. Nine point eight four ounces. Uh, 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 don't cheat. Nine point eight four at 279 grams. So, uh, yeah, there's some heft in these. Some information on uh, Austin, and this is an article, can't remember when this came out, um, but you can pause and read this. I'll give you a link to this one down below. But they're saying this is really, a, uh, Austin is a great steel in this uh, Damascus uh, formula here. Hard but flexible. They talk about carbide formation, sharpening, and their conclusion here. And also on the XCR MOV15, here's your steel composition for that kind of steel. And compare that to the German 1.4116 steel. You'll see that it's pretty similar. So... Quite a variety of knives. Check it out. Click on the link. Um, and uh, 
see what you think. If you're into kitchen knives, but you really don't want to spend several hundred dollars on a kitchen knife, you want to try something out that seems pretty quality, or you can hold back and wait for my one year anniversary, whatever trial. Uh, they, they look and feel better than anything i got in the drawer. i got a lot of various and sundry knives, believe me. But, uh, you know, I bought Cutco knives like 20-something years ago from one of the kids in the neighborhood that was selling them. And we, so we have a big block of Cutco knives. Mm, a lot of them are serrated, so I, I don't sharpen serrated knives. I let uh, the guy do it for me, the Cutco rep. But the others, yes, I can sharpen. But I don't think those knives are really the steel in those knives, I think is like a 400 series stainless. So they're pretty stainless and all that, but uh, not quite as nice as these knives, although they cost way more, believe me. Uh, they look and feel like they were, you know, quality made knives. Uh, I'm expecting that they will hold up nicely but just wanted to get the word out there. I'd been alerted by several viewers about these and uh, wanted to pass it on. And you guys, you know what we do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.